talk to me I really wanna know what you Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. I hope you guys are doing really good today. I'm loving the gifts. Y'all don't post it, the damn Jeffrey Dahmer gift in the chat. I know y'all didn't. <laughs> they got Jeffrey Dahmer in here dancing. But I hope everybody's doing good. It has been so much talk about this Netflix documentary. Um, and initially I was just kind of sipping tea and kind of, you know, reading what people were saying online and stuff like that. I wasn't sure if I wanted to watch it. Um, and I know me and James, Erratic Unicorn, we were kind of talking this weekend on Telegraph about it. And he was saying that he kind of felt like it was, you know, trauma porn and he wasn't sure if he wanted to engage. And for me, I can say that I honestly do not remember a lot about Jeffrey Dahmer. Like this happened when I was a kid. I remember being in elementary school around this time. And so uh, I'm learning so much from watching this. I finally decided to, you know, start, you know, watching it. It's a 10 part episode series um, and it's on Netflix. And so it dropped like over the weekend. So I didn't start watching it until about Sunday evening. And so I watched the first two episodes and I was just kind of blown away. And then I found myself, you know, watching it at like literally one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. And it was definitely, definitely creepy. Um, and it's just another one of those Ryan Murphy, you know, situations. Um, he's the director of American Horror Story. Um, he has P uh, Evan Peters is playing Jeffrey Dahmer. And as an actor, I've always liked him in the Marvel movies. I've always liked him as, you know, Quicksilver. But he's definitely killing it as this role. And it's so eerie because there were times when I would look at Jeffrey's pictures in that orange uniform and uh, Evan looks just like him, looks just like him. And even the accent, like y'all don't understand, like growing up in the Midwest, it blows me away because a lot of times Midwest accents are not really portrayed right or they're kind of seen as goofy. Like, you know, everybody knows the East Coast accent of Brooklyn, you know, or Southern, you know. But Midwest accents are not the easiest to like really capture. And the way he talks, that is like, yeah, don't you know, no, dad. Like he just has that Midwestern voice down back where it's so eerie. It's like, it's so eerie. Like he talks like every white Midwestern dude <laughs> that I went to school with. And it's just, it's like he really embodied that character. I mean, the way he walks, just he has embodied him, right? But the thing that kind of has me nervous is that I really hope, you know, because like I tell you guys all the time when you're involved in acting, you have to really become one with that actor. Acting is a very, very spiritual thing. People don't understand that. A lot of times you're inviting that person's spirit, their energy into you to be able to tell their story, okay? and there were certain times when I look at him on camera, I see Jeffrey Dahmer. There was one point when he had one of the boys in the room with him that his eyes like turned like cat eyes and it scared me. Like I literally jumped. I wasn't expecting that. And then he goes on to just talk casually like, yeah, I hope you like my contacts. I got these the other day. And I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> it was just so creepy. The way he was just talking and, and dialoguing like him. And I just hope for his sanity and for his spirit that he exercises the role of Jeffrey Dahmer out of him. Because what a lot of people don't know that I've talked about in the past on YouTube is that, you know, when you're channeling these, you know, these characters, I don't care if it's good or bad, right? It, it, you can become one with that character. You can lose yourself. That is what happened with Heath Ledger, with Heath Ledger and the Joker. Um, that's happened to the young man who played in Boys in the Hood, the one that killed Ricky. Remember, he couldn't come out of that role. He was a good kid living in the valley. He got this gangster role. Then he started hanging out in Inglewood with all the bloods. He got jumped in. This is one of the most notable characters in Boys in the Hood. And he ended up doing a drive-by and killing three people years later, 
Yes, Michael B. Jordan as well. He had to exercise the role of Killmonger out of him. You know, so acting is a very, very spiritual thing. So for me, when I watch this Jeffrey Dahmer documentary, his acting is so good. He's become so one with the character that it makes me nervous for him. Like, I just really hope that he's with the right acting people and he's able to get back and find the core of himself and that he doesn't get lost in this character. Because, you know, as a kid, one thing I remember about this case, right, because, again, I'm like in probably fourth grade when this happened. So one thing I remember about the case was the word Laotian. I had never heard the word Laotian before. I didn't know what a Laotian was. And I remember they were saying this Laotian boy, this Laotian boy was sent back into his apartment. And I remember seeing the good boy's picture. So it kind of brought me back to my childhood. Like it, it came back rushing uh, a bunch of like memories flooding back. And I was like, I remember that, that word Laotian from way back then. But I had no idea the young boy was only 14 at the time. I had no idea Jeffrey had molested his older brother at the time. It was just so much information that, that as a kid, you know, you don't know. And as a kid, you don't need to digest. I don't need to understand what cannibalism is as a kid, you know? So I didn't even realize, like, I remember the jokes when I was younger, like Martin Lawrence on You So Crazy, talking about if they find an ass in the refrigerator, guilty. He don't need to go to trial. I remember that joke from being a kid. But I didn't know he was as sadistic as he was, you know, as far as like eating people and telling the one man he's listening to his heart and he's saying, I'm going to eat your heart. I didn't know he was making zombies out of people like, child, when I tell you, I just didn't know. Like this has really refreshed my memory and just scared the hell out of me because it just shows the depravity of human beings, like what, you know, how dark somebody can be. And the thing that's very disturbing about this, right? Another angle I can say that's really pissed me off as I'm watching this, because like I said, I didn't know all this was going on because I was in elementary school, I'm a kid. I never knew that there was this, this black woman named Glenda Cleveland that was alerting the police continuously. She kept feeling that something wasn't right. And you know, she was just being ignored and dismissed. And the fact that this community, anytime they had a concern, they were just being ignored and dismissed. And Jeffrey Domner, I'm sorry, I have to say it. He is the living, well, he's dead now, child, but he was the living embodiment of white privilege. Like, can we like just keep it real? This man was caught molesting a 13 year old child. And they literally said, well, you know, um, we see you're a hard worker. We don't want to mess up your, your background. So we'll let you just, you know, keep working on work release. We're not going to send you to prison. You know, you just do a few months and you can just work on work release. It's like, wait, what? Had he been locked up for that molestation, that could have saved other people's lives. You know, the fact that it, it was just so many nuances to this thing, right? You have the whole gay situation where there's clear homophobia, where the police don't really want to be bothered. Even when they came in the apartment, he, the, his whole thing for this reason why his apartment was stinking was, it's rotting meat. Oh, I was trying to barbecue and I, you know, I left the meat out. Oh, it's rotting meat and gay stuff. And as soon as he would say gay stuff, automatically the police officer would be like, oh no, I don't want to catch AIDS. I'm not trying to go in your apartment. I, you know, he was just able to get away with stuff where I'm sorry. If he was a black guy and he was like, oh, don't worry about the meat. It's just gay stuff. <laughs> they were like, move your black ass out the way. We're coming in to come check your apartment. HIV, AIDS or not. You know? Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, T-Sippers. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support and stay tuned for the next video.